Hey guys, I've got a really cool classic metal style guitar lesson for you today. And this is going to focus on your rhythm playing. And I want you to kind of think of this as like Iron Maiden meets Megadeth meets Judas Priest. Somewhere along those lines, that's kind of the style of this riff. Here's what you're about to learn. Alright guys, so I'm going to break this down for you in bite-sized chunks. Hey, there's nothing there. And I'm also going to give you the guitar tabs on screen right here. Now after I break down the lesson for you, after we slow it down and go through all the notes and that good stuff, I'm actually going to let you play along with the backing track. So I'm going to have about two minutes worth of backing track music for you to play along with. During that time, I'll also have the guitar tabs up, so it'll make it really easy for you to play along with it. So make sure you hang around after the lesson so you can play this along with the full mix. Now before we get started, make sure you subscribe subscribe to my channel and ding that little bell. All right guys, so we start right out of the gate moving those fingers around a little bit and what's cool is we're not starting with the heaviest note possible. Uh, we're actually starting on an F power chord, but we're gonna move those fingers around to get some different sounds on that second string. So we're gonna start out on the second fret of the first string. But now if you notice right before I do that, and this is just at the very beginning of the song, I do hit that E string, that open E, and then I come right down on that second fret. And then we go into the main part of this little riff here. Now what I'm doing here, is as soon as I hit that second fret on the first string, I hit it really quickly once again with a downstroke. Everything is downstrokes uh, in this lesson, by the way. So I hit it quickly again, and then I start going back and forth between the second and first string. See how I'm going back and forth, so I don't stay on one string after that. After I after I get this thing started, you know, we go from that second fret on the first string to the fourth fret on the second string, then back to that first string again, and then next time we hit the second string, we're on the fifth fret. And then we go back to the fourth, and then we kind of land on that second fret again which that's where, on the first string, that's where we start palm muting. So let's run through this slowly. Okay, and all we're doing there is just palm muting that power chord. So that's kind of like the easy part, but we're getting that really nice chunky feel. Now, when I'm, when I'm palm muting that, I'm actually palm muting both strings there. I hit that power chord real quickly just one time before I start palm muting, if you notice. And then we get into that palm muting part. So that's the first part of this riff. Now, we're actually going to play that a second time. And the second time, we're just going to go straight into that, you know, that first string, second fret. <laughs> We don't do what we did at the beginning of the song. Remember the beginning of the song we start out, we just hit that open string. We only do that in the beginning of the song, okay, just the start of the song. Every time after that, we're just going to dive straight to that second fret. So after I finish palm muting. Now, even though when I'm palm muting, even though my finger is already on that first string, second fret, 
I actually kind of in my head start over again. I start the roof over again. The reason I do that is because I kind of want to get that little bend and add that little that little flavor in there. <laughs> So I kind of start the whole thing over in my head, if that makes sense. I like to pretend, okay, I'm not just going from the power chord and staying on that note. I pull everything else off and just focus on that one note to start it. And I hope that makes sense. If anything doesn't make sense, by the way, just leave me comments and I'll do my best to explain them. All right, so we're basically going to play that riff over again. So I'm going to start from the from the beginning from the top. All right. So the second time around, we're adding some more notes, actually some more chords in there. And the chords that we're adding just to simplify things is going to be the E power chord. Okay. That's zero on the first string and then the fret number two on the second. And we're also going to play a G power chord. So that's going to be three and five. Now I'm going to play that second part slowly before we break it down and before I explain it. So here's what it sounds like. Okay. What we're doing right when we get to that note, we dive straight into that E power chord. Palm mute twice, then open E, and then go to the G. Now I do a really cool kind of Megadeth style riff here. And I, I've always liked that. I, I hear that and then I can't think of any particular songs right on the top of my head. Uh, but, you know, it does remind me of that. It's got that Megadeth feel. You know, Dave Mustaine does that in some of his songs. I think I'm thinking about Tornado of Souls. There's like a very similar, uh, not similar riff, so to speak, but a similar style, if that makes sense. So anyway, what we're doing here when we, when we hit that G power chord, I'm going open three, two. And that puts us right back into, you know, into the beginning again there. So if we were to play this whole thing through, let's play the entire thing through twice, because when we get to the backing track in, in about a minute or two here, uh, that's what you're going to do. You're going to play that entire thing twice. Okay, so let's go through that. <laughs> That was part one. Part two here really is based on palm muting and power chords. It's a little bit more simple. However, you're going to be changing those power chords. I don't want to say really, really fast, but a lot. All right. So let's go right into that. And here's just a quick transition piece. What we just played here, that last time you play that, you're actually not going to end on that that uh, that first string second fret you're actually going to go right into the e power chord because that's going to be the basis of this ne next section and actually we're in a different key if you notice now we're going to the e power chord So we're, we're going to an entirely different key here. And that's the beauty of this whole pattern though, or both patterns, you know, coming together like this, you know, we're starting out in one key and then we're going to a different key, a lower key, which kind of makes it, you know, heavier and just a little bit more evil sounding, you know, having those two, those two key changes there. All right. So, or the one key change to be technically correct. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to call out the power chords and what we're playing we're going to be playing, of course, we're palm muting that E. And we're 
And we're going to be playing power chords and kind of going back and forth between the two, which I'll explain. But let me just tell you what power chords we're using. It's going to be a B flat. Now I'm reminded of that line in the Goonies where they're playing the piano. And if they don't play the right chords, the rocks are going to fall on them. It's like, you better play the right key or we're all going to B flat. <laughs> I don't know if I told the joke in its entirety, but anyway, it's funny. So the B flat, we're playing an A, playing a G, and we're also throwing in an F as well. That F power chord with the E power chord just always gives it that wicked feeling. So it's really cool. All right, so here's how the riff sounds together. Palm muting the E power chord to B flat, then back to palm muting, then A, back to palm muting that open string again to G. Okay, that's the first part of that. The second part is going to go from the E to the F. Back to palm muting the open string to the G. And then we do that little thing. Open three, open. Kind of that mega deathy feeling there. All right, so I'm going to play this through one more time. Alright guys, now it's time to have some fun. We're going to play these riffs along with a full mix, the full backing tracks. I will have the guitar tabs on the screen, so this will make it really easy to play along with.
So that was a lot of fun and I actually had fun, you know, recording this riff. So here's what happened. I just had this riff in my head today uh, when I came up to the studio. Actually, I was getting ready to work on, you know, songs for the album I'm currently writing and recording. But I just had this random riff pop in my head. I'm like, I better lay this down because if I don't, I will forget it. And I did. And I'm like, hey, let's just turn it into a lesson because... Here's the thing, there's several little components in here that kind of work together for that classic heavy metal style of playing. Remember, you know, in the beginning of the video, I said this is kind of like a, kind of reminded me of like an Iron Maiden meets Megadeth meets Judas Priest type thing. You've got some, you got some really classic style metal riffs and techniques in here, but you've also got kind of like a thrash metal feel to it as well. So we're combining the good old fashioned palm muting that's kind of like the culprit of metal music as is power chords and you've got plenty of like power chords just kind of moving around there as well and we've got some downstrokes in there but here's the kicker here's the here's the big thing for this lesson we're not starting out with the heaviest note possible a lot of times we tend to start our metal songs out with that heavy in this case E power chord. I'm in standard tuning, by the way. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but of course, by now you guys have figured that out. Uh, but we're not starting on that, and there's nothing wrong with starting on that. But every now and then, I like to start the song out on something different. So this is this is one of those things that kind of throws you for a loop. You're like, wait a minute, we're not starting on that heaviest note there. We're starting on an F instead. So I think that's kind of cool. And you've also got a little. I know that, that specific riff that I'm playing in the beginning there, now that I think about it, it's kind of like that crazy trainish style as well because you're moving those fingers around on, on those notes on the second string there. So that's kind of cool. That's a really nice finger exercise for you. So again, we're combining all these really cool classic style and, and thrash metal style rhythm techniques. So guys, feel free to leave me any questions about this riff. Like I said, this is kind of a really fun riff to play and I encourage you to go back to that point in the video there because uh, also in the YouTube description, I've got it mapped out where each segment is. I've got the timing of each segment. For example, if you want to go directly to the backing track part, you can just go to the YouTube description here and just scroll down to where you see the content and timings and just click on that timing and it'll take you right there. So that's kind of a convenient thing that YouTube's allowed us to do. Thank you, YouTube. Anyway, guys, leave me any questions in the comments there. And uh, until the next video, as always, keep it metal.